Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. Painting is one of the most popular projects with do-it-yourselfers, so this week we're helping two new homeowners tackle the chore the right way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done this before. Oh. Interior painting is one of those home improvement projects that lots of people take on, and it can make a big difference in a home. The house is in really great shape. There's just some colors, not that we necessarily hate any of the colors in this house. We don't, um, but we just sort, sort of want to make it our own. The tools are pretty simple, the time commitment isn't outrageous, and you can do it a little at a time unless you're trying to get moved into a new house, like David and Melissa Laster. We're gonna have to get this stuff in here in a very short amount of time. They just bought this 70 year old home and they're anxious to get moved in. My favorite thing about this house, it would be, I like the layout a lot. Uh, I love the yard uh, and I like the, the floors. The floors were the first thing I noticed. That's probably my favorite thing about the house, but just the charm and the built-ins and all the original things from, you know, it being an older home is what I really love. Uh, our master bedroom, I'd really like to change the color. Just, uh, I'm not really even sure what you would call that color. Uh, <laughs> not really overjoyed with it from day one. The uh, kids both chose colors for their room. Our daughter, Olivia, chose a lavender. Um, and then Brooks is going with a gray for his room, I think. And then the office. The office appears to have been recently painted, but the color is, well. It's very green, and I love green. Actually, his favorite color is green. Not that green. But I don't think that's the color we're going for in there. So we're not really sure which direction we're headed, but we're headed away from that particular green, I think. Right. <laughs> but home improvements, uh, that's really my realm, I guess. Yeah. Except for painting. He painting. hates to paint. Painting I like hard. to paint. I think it's kind of therapeutic, but he hates it. Oddly enough, David can't miss work this week. I am just distraught that she has to do all the painting. <laughs> but that's where we come in. Come on in. Welcome. Oh, what happened to your foot there? I just had foot surgery oh. a couple of weeks ago, so oh, I'm my... still a little hobbly, but I I'm doing all right. Sock. It's cool. Thank it's you. Good... It keeps my toes warm. <laughs> <laughs> come on upstairs. Alrighty. The house looks like it's in great shape. It is. We're very happy with many of the paint colors, yeah, but not all good. of them. So some of them we want to change, like Ooh, this one. Wow. <laughs> I can see why. It's very green. <laughs> I really don't know what color I want this room to be. But just a little, maybe more of a soothing color than what it right. is right now. <laughs> right, exactly. Now, they painted this, this the same color as the ceiling, it looks like. Um, were you thinking, what were you thinking on that from the standpoint? Because, I mean, there's no real standard. You could stay with the ceiling painted like that. You could go with this color and then paint that strip the same color and then just have the trim color in the middle. Sometimes people would say that having it the same color as the ceiling may make it feel a little larger. So you have one other room you wanted us to work with you on? I do. Okay. This is going to be my son's room. Wow, plenty of room in here. Yeah, he's going to love it. He also loves the fact that it's upstairs. He thinks that's <laughs> fantastic. So. Yeah, that's great. This will be really nice. And uh, are you thinking of two different colors for the rooms? Definitely. Just need to think about that when you're getting getting your paint. And we'll take all of these out. We'll get we'll get all of these out and prep everything so that Perfect. when you get here, I know you got uh, some kids to teach tomorrow at school. Right. So as soon as you get through with that, you can come over and we'll teach you some things about painting. Great. I'm excited. <laughs> right, this will be fun. <laughs> so while Melissa and David figure out what colors they want to start putting on these walls. What about blue? No, 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 no. Let's check in with Joe Truini for this week's Simple Solution. When painting a room, you often spend more time masking off the areas you don't want painted as you do applying paint. Here's a trick that can maybe save you some time. First, cover broad, soft surfaces with a drop cloth. And then for other surfaces, such as his backsplash, try using ceiling wrap, which is basically just plastic food wrap that has an adhesive on one side. Peel it off, pull off a big piece, tear it, and then you can just stick it right along the edge. In this case, it's the backsplash. 
And this adhesive holds pretty well. Just stick it right down. I'll add a couple more pieces there, but you see it just drapes over the faucet and onto the drop cloth, so that whole area is sealed. It's also great for surfaces such as the top of the toilet tank. Again, just pull out a piece. And this is pretty affordable too. I mean, with a couple of bucks, you get you know 100 square feet of it, enough to do a small bathroom easily. But anyway, you just stick it down. Now, because this is plastic, you know the paint won't soak through, so you don't have to worry about staining any surfaces. And when you're done, just peel it off, toss it out, and cleanup is done. David and Melissa just purchased this home and are about to move in. Before they do, there's a lot of painting to be done, so we're helping them get a jump start with some pointers and prep work. You know, Alan, there's really not that many cracks in these walls for a house this old. I think a little bit of repair of the cracks and maybe get rid of some of these phone lines and, and we'll be ready to go. You know, how to approach painting an interior room is something you can get a lot of opinions on. You know, I think there are probably as many opinions on how to paint a room the right way as there are painters out there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and what we're going to do though is what we feel is the best way to address some of the real common things you have to face, especially when it comes to preparing a room. So once we remove the old exposed phone lines, register covers, and unnecessary hardware, we're ready to start patching. And the thing is, is you have to realize there's going to be some shrinkage with the spackling when you use it. So uh, it's almost impossible to do it with just one coat. So just fill in the holes and then know that it'll shrink a little bit. It'll dry really fast, and then you can put another coat on. For larger holes, it's a good idea to fill in some of the space with backing, like tape, to minimize the amount of spackle or joint compound needed, as well as the shrinkage. Cracks in plaster walls often have raised edges, so you have to scrape them down a bit before you fill them up. I like to use latex caulk for this job because it flexes some as the plaster expands and contracts. But in either case, once the void is filled, we need to disguise the repair with some texture. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got a little sponge, and over here I've got some mud, so some drywall compound, and a little bit of water I'm going to sprinkle on it. Then watch this. I'm going to put my index finger right in the back of the sponge, and I'm going to bow it out just a little bit, just like that, all right? So now I've got a little mud that I'm going to start just dabbing on, then come back. And that's one way to put some texture on the wall. And another way to match the texture is wall texture in a can. This is readily available at just about any home center and it makes it so easy to match the texture, especially when you have a larger spot like I have right here. Now when you're using this texture, first of all, it'll tell you to shake it like crazy for about a minute. And then it has an adjustable dial right on the top like this so that you can adjust to the right texture that you want. And I'm going to try a medium texture and this is always a good idea to try it out on a piece of cardboard before you actually put it on the wall. So it's a little heavy there but just right there so I think I'm ready to hit the wall. Another thing we need to do in this room is to prep the walls to remove the gloss of the existing green paint so the new paint will stick a lot better. Liquid deglosser is a great solution for this because it keeps you from having to sand everything. While I'm doing this, Alan is getting started with the ceiling paint in the next room. Since Melissa decided to bring the ceiling color down the wall to the picture rail, Alan's covering the space with a brush and apparently working on some kind of off-the-wall impression of me. Hmm. What is it that Alan hates to do more than anything? Oh yeah, Alan hates to paint. I think we should do an episode on painting. That's Danny. When you get ready to start with the roller, make sure you pick up some of these roller tray covers. They make cleanup a lot easier as well as switching between colors. Of course, the thing you have to look out for when rolling a ceiling is the tiny splatters that drop off the roller from above. Hey, did I tell you about my uh, invention idea that I think you could go in with me on? Mm -mm, let's, let's talk about it. I want to get some self-sticking, clear plastic lens covers. Individual lens covers. Lens covers for cameras? For, no, no, for, for, for your glasses. So when you're doing this kind of, you're rolling and all that paint's getting on your glasses, uh -huh. and then you just take your glasses off, you peel it off, and you got clean glasses. I bet NASCAR has some of those. Hey! <laughs> I notice you're not wearing a cap, Danny. No. That white just blends right in, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you won't know it. You won't know if it's. <laughs> <laughs>
When you put the second coat on a ceiling, you want to run your roller perpendicular to the direction of the first coat. That way you can ensure that there are no holidays, which is painter's jargon for missed spots. While I'm doing this, Alan begins masking the windows and trim in the office. By the way, don't forget to cover the outlets and switches with tape while you're at it. We're just about ready to surprise Melissa because when she gets here after work, instead of rolling these rooms, we're going to set her up with a spray gun to knock them out quick. You know, I love painting projects, especially when the right tool makes my project go so much faster and easier. And take a look at this. This is the Wooster 9-inch Sherlock Roller. And what sets this apart is, first of all, I like the fact that it has these springs right here so that when I slide my roller into place, you see how it locks on? That prevents the roller from walking off of the handle, which it so often does when you're in the middle of your painting project. Uh, I like the handle, it's got a nice grip, so it's easy to maneuver. But I have to say, the biggest thing that I like about this is that it makes cleanup easier. How, you ask? Well, let me show you. Instead of having to grip the roller and slide it off, all you have to do, and of course it might be a little easier with the weight of the paint on this, but since this is dry, look, I have a bucket right here where I would want to dispose of it. All I have to do is tap it really hard on the side of the bucket, and I've got a clean roller handle ready to go again. This should be plenty big enough. Oh, hello hey there. Hey guys. Hey. How's it going? This week we're helping Melissa Laster do some interior painting before she and her family move into a home they've just bought. Have you ever been involved in any spraying? <laughs> no. Well, you're about to be. <laughs> Surprise. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> While Alan gets the paint sprayer ready to go, Melissa helps me finish masking the room. Okay, let's just tear off whatever you want. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I get to have a little fun. All right, let's see. We got a mask. All okay, right. so put your little mask on. Okay. Okay, there you go. All right, I'm gonna pinch your <laughs> nose here. I'm going to be so beautiful. There you go. All right, there. Okay. Now, glasses. Here you go. Okay. That's not working there. And then you have your gloves. And you have your hat. I am. Um, there we go. So pretty. Now, let's paint. Okay, just a few tips on using a sprayer. First of all, instead of using it like this, where you'd have a radius that'd be different distances from the wall, mm -hmm. you want to go parallel with the wall, just like that. Okay. And so, of course, you want to start at the top, and then just real even, we'll set the pattern to where the pattern in the wand is just right, and then back and forth, and just take your time, and just put a light coat on. It's gonna take two coats. All so right. just put a real light coat on it, and you'll work your way around. Al and I'll go drink some tea, relax a little bit, I come see. back in a little while, fill up your canister again, and it'll be great. Let me ask you this. Do you have a tendency to go up and down or back and forth? Because <laughs> that makes a difference in what this is. I don't know. <laughs> I've never done this before. Oh, okay. It's all yours. You all are making me really nervous. <laughs> I'm going to paint you. <laughs> Point that way. <laughs> All right, you want to be about six to eight inches from the wall to start. Once Melissa gets started, she really gets the hang of it and starts making a lot of progress. So Alan and I can take a little break. Have us see what we got. Ah, uh, no food yet. <laughs> no problem, you have to spin me around. There we go, yeah. What do you got? Man, I've already passed that level a couple days ago. Come on. Yeah, well, if my birds were a little angrier, I'd be up there, too. Really, guys? Where'd you go? <laughs> the great thing about using this Wagner sprayer on walls is that you don't have to switch tools to get into corners or tight spots, so Melissa can cover the whole room quickly. In fact, she moves on to the next room by the time we get back from our break. All right, how you doing? Hey guys, where have y'all been? <laughs> well, we had to look at a few things around yeah. the house there, but you yeah, know, you've, <laughs> <laughs> you've done great though. The, the blue room looks fantastic in yeah. there and you're well on your way here with all the gray color. How, how, how do you think about this? Well, I was intimidated at first, yeah. but it's really awesome and really easy to use and really fast. 
Yeah, it does make a big difference in it, and uh, you feel comfortable now. We're about to get out of here. You feel comfortable um, continuing? Yeah, to I think up I this? can finish this room up. Okay, perfect. Well, you finish this tonight. Tomorrow we'll start on the trim. Everything will be looking good about this time tomorrow. Sounds great. Okay, all right. Thanks. Good luck with it. Melissa finishes the second room that evening, so we're ready to trim the next day. Now you get to uh, learn how to paint a little trim. Okay. This is a little more patience, a little more um, skill. So we'll see how it works. But I did want you to um, take a peek in this other room for a second. Oh, okay. Let's see what you think right in here. So how's that? Wow! It's all finished. All finished. So we took care of this room and all the trim, all the cleanup. So you get to take care of this room, see? No problem. Yay. Come on, let's get you started. <laughs> Okay, this is where I left off on this room is a little bit of caulking. I pretty much caulked everything, but I thought you'd have to do just a little bit of caulking so that you can feel okay. good about it. All right, so sure. I've got the tip cut, which is very important to cut it at the right angle. Okay. And then go ahead and let you step up there with your with your bad oh, foot. That's my hobbly okay, foot. Now, here's what you want to do. You want to take this and real evenly squeeze the caulk out and just go along there. Try to keep going in a smooth line and then just put just enough on there and then and then we'll have a lot of fun after that, okay? So. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> okay, all right. right. There you go, just, there you go. Uh-huh, real smooth, there you are. Maybe a little faster because it looks a little too thick. Oh yeah, keep going, there you go. That's good. Now, I've got a damp rag here. So what you wanna do, put your finger on it and get it a little wet. Then you're going to rub your finger on it and then wipe it off, rub your finger, wipe it off, and it's just gonna be beautiful. All right. Okay, now wipe it off, there you go. All right, just real smooth. Yeah, there you go. Isn't that fun? Yeah. It's like spreading toothpaste. It is. All right, you got your caulking lesson done. Yes. All right, now a little tape. Along the hardwood floors, we're using green frog tape to mask off the paint, but on the freshly painted walls, we're using their yellow lower tack version of the tape. That way, we won't peel up the new coat of paint when we remove the tape. In no time, we're ready to paint. All right, you're ready. You're ready to do the rest of the room. Perfect. So while Melissa finishes up the trim in this room, let's take another break and answer one of your questions. Renee asked, what's the best way to clean out my paintbrushes? Of course, after you finish a paint project around your home, cleaning brushes is not the most favorite thing for anyone, but it's fairly easy and very important. If you're using an oil-based paint, of course, you'll use mineral spirits to clean it, but most people use latex and soap and water like I have here is just perfect. It's best just to put it in a bucket like this, work out as much of that paint as you can, and then blasting away a little bit more of it with a hose will get a lot of the particles out of it. But to finish up the cleaning project, whether it's oil or latex, use that wire brush to really work out all of the little particles and to kind of comb out all of the hairs on your brush and then let it dry just a little bit and then use your original sheath to put it back in place so that it'll keep the bristles nice and straight. And if you don't have this, you can use newspaper, fold it around it neatly, put a piece of masking tape on it, and it'll work great. David and Melissa Laster wanted to make their new home their own and with their own new colors. The old ones weren't bad, they just weren't theirs. With the right kind of prep and the use of a few new tools, these areas look brand new. Besides the great new colors, these rooms have no more unsightly cracks, holes, or random wires stapled to the walls. So, the Laster's new house feels new. Now, Melissa, I know it's been several weeks since we've been here and you got all moved in. How was the move? As moves go, it was pretty painless, I guess, Good. and the room still is a little bit of a work in progress, but I think he's enjoying it. Yeah, Brooks looks like he's having fun with his little desk and a little project, but I'm interested in the office. I know you guys were talking about building this nice desk in the little alcove area. Uh, what's, what's this? What's changed here? Well, we've had a bit of change of a plan for this room. So you're telling me this is going to be a nursery instead of an office? Yes, this is going to be the nursery. Wow. Well, that's pretty exciting. And, hey, that, well, it fits well in there. Kind of like it was made to go there. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Hey, I hope you could see how you can do a little painting, spend a little time on a house like this and make a big, big difference with very little money invested. And thanks for being with us this week on today's homework. We'll see you next week. Well, all I can say is I hope it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I expect a loop to loop, all right? Oh, that's far enough. <laughs> <sighs>
Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.